Hi, my name is Zonar Horvat. In this video, we will continue the story of assertions. We will apply assertions to a very complicated function to make sure that it is running as expected and also to make sure that uh, the performance penalty paid by the assertions is acceptable. This video is a continuation of a mini series we have covered incremental coding, a technique that uh, lets you write code and reduce chances of, of introducing bugs into it. Then we have applied a technique to prove correctness of code by entailing certain attributes that must be true at certain points in code. In the third episode of this mini-series, we have started working with debug assertions as a method of demonstrating at runtime that the code and the state of the memory is as expected at critical points during the code's execution. If you missed any of these episodes, please find the links in the description of this video. It might be hard for you to watch this video in isolation if you have missed everything that precedes it. Now straight to the code. This is the code as we left it in the previous video. Comments are the assertions, but not executable ones. That is the proof of correctness as we left it while we were just entailing the correctness proof. Now we are moving to implementing debug assertions in place of these comments. And this is the partitioning loop of a quicksort implementation, the most complicated part of it. It will be very interesting to see how the assertions will cope with this level of complexity. What we were doing in the previous video was to just replace every, let's say, Boolean condition in these comments with a debug assertion. So here it is, the one that is checking the bounds while partitioning another assertion. But here we encounter a problem. It's not possible to capture a span in a closure. Span must always stand on the stack and closures try to capture them in by reference to hold them on heap, which is not possible with spans. So we must do something else. How do we implement this complex assertion? If you meet a complicated assertion or an assertion that you cannot just do in one line, like here, then you just introduce a helper function for that, a local function, for example, and call it from the debug assert as usual. The call to this function will be removed in the release build as debug assertions are always removed. And so there will only be the local function, which effectively costs you nothing at runtime. Of course, it doesn't have to be a local function, just move it somewhere else, put it into the object, make it static, do anything you like. Just make a call to that function in the debug assert. The next part of the partitioning loop had a similar check there, nothing new, only another local function that does the heavy lifting for us. There's more complexity in swapping the bounds. We are still in the partitioning loop. Quite a lot of debug assertions here to check all the Boolean conditions we have discovered. Am I overdoing this? What do you think? I am. And there is an alternative to this. So while I'm completing the implementation, you can start thinking what better we can do instead of this. Instead of making this much mess in the code. The end of the partitioning loop, we can reuse the functions, the local functions we made. And this condition is very important. This assertion is critical. It is demonstrating that the partitioning loop has consumed the entire span and closed the gap between the left and the right partition. Without this assertion, we might make huge mistake when applying the quicksort algorithm. One more step before the recursive calls. I am asserting that the pivot is in the middle position and it is still partitioning the span into the left and right partition as defined by the algorithm. All right. 
Final step, we need to prove that both left and right partitions are sorted after recursive calls. There are no assertions for the termination. I cannot prove termination with assertions, of course. I will need a helper function to check whether span is sorted and then call it two times. Once for the left hand partition, the other time for the right hand partition, and it is done. We have all those comments that constituted the proof of correctness of this function substituted with the debug assertions. It is a huge endeavor, but it will pay off. Look, I'm going to run the application in the debug build first, so those assertions are running. This looks like three orders of magnitude slower than it used to be. The penalty is huge. All the assertions are executing. It takes forever to complete execution of, of this application. But anyway, it completed and nothing failed. So all the assertions were true. We do have our demonstrative proof on quite a large set of tests that the function is really, really doing everything we expected it to do. So this is basically the way you would try to catch the bugs in your code. And when I repeat run in the release build, it will still be as fast as ever because all the calls to debug assert have been removed by the compiler. But we have two large problems here. One is verbosity. Pff, this code is terrible. And the other is performance. We really cannot sustain three orders of magnitude slow down in debug. That's too much. So in the rest of this video, we will address these two issues. One thing is to move everything that can be moved away from this code. Like helper methods. Let me introduce a helper class, for example, with quantifiers. We cannot use link on the span, so we must introduce our own extensions. A universal quantifier on spans. Existential quantifier. The inversion, none. It is tempting to wrap these into assertions. But the compiler cannot remove all the code. It can remove the code to debug assert, but it cannot entirely remove everything that made the call to this outer function, like calculating its, its uh, arguments. The function will remain empty in release build. Compiler will inline it back and replace it with nothing. So the body will disappear, but calculating its arguments cannot disappear because if there is anything to calculate there, the compiler just doesn't know if that is important or not and cannot remove that. And so if you make these assertions this way, there will be a runtime penalty in release build. So I will just give this attempt up. But we can add descriptive extensions that are making sorting tests, for example. Here, none is greater than the value. Then all greater than, we will use that for the right-hand partition. Is sorted, we need that helper method as well to check whether the span is sorted or not. Very useful. Functions that will help us move these out. We don't need these local functions anymore. And now we can substitute these tests in debug insertions. Look, these calls are quite readable now. I like it better this way. Debug assertions are still there, but we can read them and understand what they are doing. Let's do the same in these other four places. The local function is sorted is also obsolete now. Let's remove it, substitute tests in sort assertions, and that's it. All the assertions in this solution are now short and readable. So one problem we had is now addressed. We have moved everything to helper methods and make only small and readable assertions in the target function. I will run the debug and it is even slower than it used to be. We have even larger penalty. 
when you make additional calls as we did this uh, that will cost us especially we made the calls inside the loop that is exceptionally costly we have made calls on spans in every iteration of the loop instead of working with one or two elements we are working with n elements this time in every iteration of the loop that is very costly but release build will run as fast as it always did there is no penalty in the release build the next improvement is then to revise these uh, assertions do we really need all of this now that we know how the proof is going we can summarize it in two critical points one is partitioning assert that partitioning works and we can assert it after the partitioning loop we don't have to check every single bit as it unfolds because we know that after the partitioning loop the span must be separated split into two into left hand and right hand partition that are in strict relationship to the to the pivot element that's it and then we assert the recursive calls that must sort every partition separately and that's it let's start remove all these ephemeral assertions that cost us but more importantly these these in the loop these are exceptionally costly i must remove them more more we're deleting assertions on spans terrible performance and what remains is the essence leave this assertion that checks whether the loop has traversed the entire span it is very important assert partitioning relationship that remains we must ensure that this partitioning did the good job for us and leave these last assertions checking that both partitions have been sorted recursively let's run the debug build now look it is fast we do have certain penalty one order of magnitude but that's we can sustain that the release build will be as fast as it ever was so this completes the demonstration of applying debug assertions to a complicated complex function you can place assertions in all the places after every single line of code and they would mimic the formal proof that that piece of code is doing what the requirements are telling what i used to call the proof of correctness of code but that might cost you a lot especially if you are adding assertions on collections inside the loops so what you do instead is to perform assertions in critical points points where you know exactly that a certain condition must satisfy or otherwise we cannot consider the code correct and then just do that the other improvement was to move all the helper functions away into extension methods put them somewhere else just don't don't put them in the executable code that you are testing this completes the part of the series where we have first developed the function then proven its correctness then asserted its correctness and that brings us to the final chapter where we will apply magic now that you know how the proof goes how the assertions go can you write code that reads exactly as the assertions so to make them obsolete because the assertion would just repeat the code that doesn't make sense can you write the code that reads the same as the proof of its correctness that is what we will do in the next episode with which we will close this chapter of writing code that contains no bugs watch my video courses published at plural site udemy udemy for business where i have published tons of videos explaining all the aspects of object oriented design and programming and also functional design and programming on top of that thank you for watching and see you in the next video